Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. We need to talk about Red Hat. So a lot has happened in the last couple weeks. I want to start by saying I made this video uh, two weeks ago where the title of it was, Is Red Hat Enterprise Linux the Right Choice for a New Linux Admin? Now that was before all of this drama started. So in that video, I talked a lot about how much I liked Red Hat Enterprise Linux, how I thought it was great, how it was super useful, and I went as far as to say that a new Linux admin should learn Linux on Red Hat. I have completely changed my mind since then. Let's talk about why. So most obviously, Red Hat changed the way it releases source code. I'm not going to say it's closed source. That's disingenuous. And a lot of clickbait titles have come out saying that Red Hat's going closed source. That's not what's happening. But they are doing some very greedy corporate bullshit. So the register summarized it very nicely. They said Red Hat has decided to stop making the source code of RHEL available to the public. From now on, it will be only available to customers who can't legally share it. So it's not exactly closed source, but it's obviously directly against the spirit of open source software. So a lot of people got very upset about this. And so Red Hat decided it would be a good idea to publish a blog post. And there were some issues with this blog post. So I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but I have picked some quotes from it that I'd like to talk about. So, first of all, they put this quoted message from the Vice President of Core Platforms. They, they took this little excerpt and placed it on the side here. And it says, simply rebuilding code without adding value or changing it in any way represents a real threat to open source companies everywhere. This is a real threat to open source and one that has the potential to revert open source back to a hobbyist and hackers only activity. So I have some problems with this. So first of all, this comes off as a threat. The implication here is that, oh, if we if Red Hat were to go away tomorrow, then enterprises would stop using open source. That's not the case. You know, the, the rise of open source in enterprise environments is very much a Pandora's box situation. Red Hat could disappear tomorrow and enterprises everywhere would still be using open source. And, you know, and they we'll, we'll, we'll get to some more items here, but I just want to say that this thinly veiled threat of saying, hey, if we go away, then you as a Linux admin, your livelihood is at stake. You know, it doesn't leave a very good taste in my mouth. That's like what an abusive boyfriend says to his girlfriends to get her to stay when she's thinking about leaving. So let's look at some quotes here that I've picked out. So the first one here is the generally accepted position that these free rebuilds are just funnels churning out rel experts and turning into sales just isn't reality. I wish we lived in that world, but it's not how it actually plays out. Instead, we've found a group of users, many of whom belong to large or very large IT organizations that want the stability, lifecycle, and hardware ecosystem of RHEL without having to actually support the maintainers, engineers, writers, and many more roles that create it. These users have also decided not to use one of many other Linux distributions. So there's a lot to unpack there, but I want to start by pointing out that they're taking, they're doing something very similar to what Sony did in 2000, where they took a very adversarial approach to their customers, because in Sony's situation, most people were pirating their licensed music, and they saw those as missed sales, and so they tried to go after you using more and more nefarious tactics, up to the point of installing malware on your computer. Now, they took an adversarial stance against their customers. They said, you, the people paying us money, are the enemy because you're not paying us enough money. So I kind of see what the same thing going on here. They're taking an adversarial stance to their potential customers. And they're saying, you, the people who want to use our product and enjoy it, you're the problem. So that never pans out well for a company. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that the 
the big wigs at IBM let them put out a statement like this because you know you're right they could have decided to use any other number of Linux distributions and I can tell you what they're gonna do now uh, they're gonna go to Debian and uh, open SUSE and you know you're not and I, I thought I thought the whole idea with Red Hat's business model was that they did consulting and technical support for licensed copies of Red Hat. You know, I, I thought this whole time that that was the product and that Red Hat Linux was meant to embody the spirit of open source and prove that open source can work in an enterprise environment. They're kind of bastardizing it for the sake of turning that into the product. So what this tells me is that they have not been able to innovate well enough on their core product, which is services and consulting. They've fallen behind in that field, and they're losing money, and now they're saying, okay, what can we get money out of? Well, we can get money out of Red Hat Enterprise Linux if we kill all of the downstream projects from it. And, you know, it's not, it's not going to work like that. You know, people are going to see this, your average Linux admin is going to see this, and they're going to go, you know, sorry, uh, there's Debian, there's OpenSUSE. And again, they're taking an adversarial stance against their potential customers. That never pans out well. So they said, ultimately, we do not find value in a rail rebuild, and we are not under any obligation to make things easier for rebuilders. This is all our call to make. Again, this is rubbing me the wrong way. This comes off as very adversarial. So why are they taking this stance of telling the potential customers that they're the problem? So yeah, this is very much a, if you don't like it, tough shit. Too bad. That's, that's what it reads like. And uh, I'm not taking it out of context, like that was the context, it was, this is what we're doing, eat shit if you don't like it. And so I did want to point out one thing they said here, the CentOS stream GitLab source is where we build RHEL releases, it, it in the open for all to see. To call RHEL closed source is categorically untrue and inaccurate, and they go on a little bit about that, but I, I just want to point out that yes, that is true, Red Hat is not going closed source, they're just betraying the spirit of open source by ruining one of the main draws to it, which is the ability to fork a project if you don't like the direction it's going in. You know, that's, that's one of the strengths that people talk about open source having all the time, and Red Hat is actively putting themselves against that spirit. And then they also talk about, like, hey, you know, we do have no-cost developer subscriptions where you get 16 systems, and that's not an equal trade, <laughs> you know? The average Linux administrator is losing more because of this decision they've made than they're gaining with the 16 free systems, and those don't come with support. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they're just a license to install. So they finished by saying, simply rebuilding code without adding value or changing it in any way represents a real threat to open source companies everywhere. This is a real threat to open source, one that has the potential to revert open source back to a hobbyist and hackers only activity, which is categorically untrue. Enterprises, again, will be using open source if Red Hat were to disappear tomorrow. If Red Hat took two years to slowly fade away, enterprises would still be using open source. You know, Red Hat's not the only game in town, and they're acting like they single-handedly hold up the open source enterprise market, when in the same article they are admitting that they don't have much of that market because their product wasn't good enough, and now they're trying to turn something else into their products. They're just trying to squeeze more money out of everyone they can. It is, this is the problem with corporations getting involved with Linux and open source. So, although you might agree with the leadership at a company today, there's no guarantee that you'll agree with the leadership at a company tomorrow. And, you know, these people in these companies, they're, they're not acting in your best interest. They're not uh, officials that you have elected because you agree with their point of view and you think they're going to do what's right for you. They are just people out to make money, just like you and me. And it's just sad to see them fall so far. 
I, I don't think anything is going to bring them back from this hole they've dug themselves. So let me know down below. I've got three Red Hat servers that I need to migrate. One of them's a virtual host, one of them's a Samba share, and then one of them is a Podman container host. And I need to migrate those away from Red Hat to something else, maybe Debian, maybe NixOS. Let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see me do with that, and I'll maybe make a video about it and share my experiences. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Patrick. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I will see you in the next one.